This is the Deseret News, Sunday edition, when your family needs to know more. And good morning. This is the Deseret News Sunday edition. I'm Dave McCann. Finding a balance in life is one of the great challenges, especially as we juggle careers and raise children. But similar personal and professional sacrifices can be required of those who support aging family members who can't care for themselves. Is that what they say, time flies when you're having fun? Or? Sherry Thompson I guess, huh? has two jobs. Weekdays, she works at a home health agency that helps elderly people living at home. Nights and weekends, she cares for her mom who has Alzheimer's. It's sure a lot easier when it's not your family. <laughs> Thompson knows she's not alone. Two of every five adults are family caregivers. I didn't think it would ever be like this. I always thought my mom would be my mom. We used to shop together and go to dinner. And Do you like living here with John and I? Do you like me live here? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely burnout. Definitely burnout. But a big question is this. Who's going to take care of Thompson when she gets old? Um, I've thought about it, but it's not gone any further than that. It's all about the aging of the baby boomer generation. According to an AARP report, the ratio between adults in their caregiving years and the elderly is seven to one. As baby boomers move into their 80s, that ratio will shrink to three to one, and there won't be enough family caregivers to go around. The Affordable Care Act once included long-term care insurance, but it was deemed unworkable. We are all at risk. So a commission was set up to address the problem. They made recommendations, but didn't answer the biggest question how to pay for long-term care. We really do need to struggle with how we're going to pay for these services in the future. Financing is just this elephant in, in the room. It, it is almost a problem that looks too big to tackle. So what's the difference between... Right now, most of the responsibility and financial burden is on families. What is, has the same difference? So what's the difference between 12 minus 6? Jeannie Williams' mom has a chronic condition that's left her legally blind. Dad's the primary caregiver, but Williams knows that may change. Williams had to care for both parents and her kids when her dad had surgery. You know, we were taught by example watching our parents care for their parents, and so that's what we'll do. It's not a question, it's not a matter really of if we have the resources then we'll help. It's a, we're gonna do it. But as that caregiver ratio changes, Gerontologists say if we are counting on families, families will need more help. I mean, we need to resource them. Can you hit that to me? Sherry Thompson's mom goes to Neighborhood House's adult daycare so Thompson can go to work. Go, girl, go. <laughs> she interacts now and she's she's more alive. <laughs> Validation is about connecting with the emotion. Jeannie Williams' dad gets caregiver training from Salt Lake County Aging Services. Our communication is nonverbal. We don't always think about the fact that it takes skill to be a good caregiver. It's, it's really something we need to be talking across, about all across society. I never thought, what will happen if I lose my health? I never really thought about it. Either. There's very few people that have like long-term care insurance. That's the scary part is, you know, what do these people do when they're not, they're not safe to live alone and they have no family? Almost all of us should be prepared at some point in our life to be a caregiver. The reality is nearly everyone will serve that role at, at some point in their life. Kathy Nelson is a well-trained in aging services, and Lauren Pollock, Laura Polachek is with AARP. Good morning. Thank you for being Good morning. here. Thank Good you. Morning. Thank you. So we prepare for retirement. Are people preparing for caregiving? No, not necessarily. In fact, most of the individuals that call us at Aging Services are already in crisis as caregivers by the time they make the phone call. It's really important that they do prepare earlier, that they find out where the local resources are, study the types of diseases that their family have in common, work as families, learn all the skills that they need to. Let's react to a graphic I want to pull up that shows how much work accommodations are made during caregiving and due to it, 64% of working caregivers leave early or take time off during the day. 17% have had to take a leave of absence. 10% had to quit a job or take an early retirement to give care. 9% reduced hours. 5% turned down a promotion. Certainly it requires a lot of time and sacrifice and adds stress, Laura, if yes, we're not prepared. Much. What have you noticed? Well, it, there's a big economic impact because not uh, bosses don't always have a lot of sympathy for people leaving early and it certainly uh, impacts the fan financial resources of the family. So that's a 
yeah. really hard thing for a caregiver to go through. We're getting older and eventually the balance is going to be where, where we're caring for our parents or our other siblings. Uh, and as you just look at the numbers, what, what lies ahead for, for the American worker if they're not prepared to care give? I think first American workers need to learn about where all their resources are so that they're not as worried about losing their jobs early because then you have a generational problem. More people retiring too early and not getting their pensions to their full amounts. So I think people need to be really aware of where can I learn the skills for caregiving? What is in-home services and how can that support me so that I don't have to leave my job early, so that I can balance this better? Laura, what have you seen as families deal with this when they are prepared? How well, much different of an experience is it? Very different. We actually have a lot of resources mm -hmm. on AARP's website at aarp.org. And it's really important for caregivers to make sure they get respite care because there's really a lot of burnout with caregivers. And they have to make sure they're taking care of themselves as well as, as, well as their loved one. All right, why are we not having these conversations? When we sit down with our parents as they're getting older, we, we tend to avoid that. Yeah. What, what's holding us back? Fear mostly. We're all afraid of aging. Um, but it's the one thing we all have in common. The moment we're born, we're aging. And it's just acknowledging that fact that this is part of the human experience so that we can reach out and say, okay, let's have a family meeting. Let's talk about what we want. Because caregiving isn't just about aging. It's about any moment when something happens in your family and someone becomes frail and vulnerable and needs your support. Do you think us as kids need to take a bolder step with our aging parents to say, we need to talk about this, we need a plan. Because a lot of us will wait until mom or dad brings yeah. it up. It's, it's like at older drivers, you need to have a conversation early. And I think the same thing is true of caregiving. You know, older person might not want to lose their independence and they're very afraid of having to rely on their children or move in with their children. So that's a big concern as well, to make sure you have some agreement mm -hmm. among family members. And one thing we've learned too in life is there's joy in service. Uh, taking care of our parents isn't the worst thing. They've, they've taken care of us, right. and so if we're prepared, uh, we can pull it off and, and, and life goes on, right? It's not a complete disruption to, to how we see things. That's exactly right. There are numerous resources, um, not only with AARP, but with your local aging services group. There are um, the aging associations all across the United States. And you can check into those and find out what's going on early. They have support groups for family members, everything you might need. All right, so as we call mom tonight, mm -hmm. what should be a question we ask just to get the conversation going? Mom, where do you see yourself in 10 or 20 years? Do you think you'll need help? Can we help you? Would you ever consider moving in with us if that's an option? Okay. And really prepare them for the idea that they might need help from their children. And they might have to figure out the ratio of when they have a caregiver outside the family or within the family. And whether or not I'm still in the will. That would, that would be a follow-up question <laughs> after all that. Maybe, Maybe that should so. come a lot later. <laughs> and what would you like to hear? What do you want people talking to their parents about? The question I love is, Mom and Dad, I'd like to support you in your independence. We know that most people want to age in place at home, securely and safely in their own environments. So if you start with that non-threatening phrase and say, this isn't a question about when you go to a nursing home, how would you like to be taken right. care of? It's the question of what do you want for your future and how can I be there as your child to help support you? Kathy and Laura, we appreciate your service. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being Thank here. You. you can read more about this topic online at DesertNews.com in Devin Merling's article, Caregiving It All When Taking Care of Mom and Dad Impacts Work-Life Balance. The Dead Sea Scrolls are considered by many historians to be the greatest archaeological find, but few people understand why. We'll uncover the secrets of the scrolls when Deseret News Sunday Edition continues.